Have you been on the hunt for the perfect FPV goggles that deliver great performance without breaking the bank? Today, we're taking a look at the Walksnail Avatar HD Goggles X. We'll be sizing them up against some of the major players like the DJI Goggles 2 and the HD Zero Goggles. Plus, we'll explore their compatibility and whether they're the ultimate choice for FPV, both now and in the future. But before we jump into the ring with the big names, let's first compare the Goggles X to their predecessor. Now, both goggles operate on the 5.8 GHz frequency and flaunt 1080p OLED displays. The Goggles X now support both analog and HDMI input, which is a major game changer. And when it comes to power, the original goggles worked well with 2-5S batteries, but using 6S was always a gamble. The Goggles X does change that, confidently supporting up to 6S power input. But there's still even more. Equipped with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which paves the way for future software updates to unlock smartphone connectivity. Plus, there's an inbuilt gyro for head tracking if you want to use it. However, there's also some notable changes, such as the absence of the Fat Shark influence, and that is previously evident in the placement of the SD card. The Goggles X also introduced a replaceable VRX module and an updated and non Fat Shark optics. It's clear that Walksnail isn't just trying to participate in the digital FPV market, but make strategic moves to separate themselves from the competition. When you stack them up against the higher priced DJI Goggles 2, the Goggles X really do offer a lot of value for money. They're like the Android of the FPV world. Think of them as like the OnePlus or a Google Pixel phone, offering decent enough quality at mid-range prices. And priced at $459 with the addition of air units at $159, Canix is sending a clear message, Walksnail is financially accessible to everyone. On the other hand, DJI is also aiming to capture budget content conscious buyers, cutting the price of their goggles Integra to $429, although the O3 Air unit does still remain at $229. The Goggle X still has a few tricks up its sleeve against DJI, specifically analog compatibility and HDMI input and output, and then there's also Caddx's commitment to regular communication and software updates. Admittedly, it does seem like you're part of their beta testing team. And that's especially important because Cadex is working on a new digital FPV system set to launch in August next year. Okay, so straight up I've got a bit of light leak around the bottom because I don't really have big cheeks and it sort of sits a little funny. Low... So the field of view looks good. Um, I think the field of view looks really good on the goggles. Like I can see everything. The image quality looks really, really nice. I think that's one of the other things as well is that you're actually going to be able to enjoy the image quality of Walksnail far better. But yeah, I think better foam padding and a bit softer would be better. Um, yeah, I think different foam padding would be a lot nicer on the goggles and have them less painful and probably a different head strap, but that's something I can change. Image quality looks good on on Walksnail. I think, you know, it's it's really good firmware. I don't get motion sickness on Walksnail like I do on DJI O3. So that's a win for me as to why I would actually rather fly Walksnail versus DJI. Um, HD Zero, no motion sickness as well, but there's the trade-offs. And with the new Freestyle VTX, it's, you know, a bit of a different beast. Um, but yeah, no, like, I think different foam padding would certainly go a long way into making these a lot nicer. It would remove a lot of the light leak that's down here um, below my cheeks and make it just more comfortable on the face because right now it's quite painful there. Next, let's compare them with HD Zero. The HD Zero goggles has truly raised the bar, combining their sleek Gundam style design with open source development and extensive compatibility. They're like the Swiss army knife of FPV goggles. However, they do come with a heftier price tag, $600 just for the goggles, and if you want the analog module adapter, that raises the price to $649. The Walksnail Goggles X, on the other hand, offer similar adaptability and even boast a higher refresh rate display. It is only 10 frames per second. You also get the Walksnail ecosystem, and the Goggles X can produce a higher resolution image due to retransmission, but this comes at a trade-off of latency, especially when compared to HD Zero's ultra-low latency and its one-way transmission. So 
question is, what's your preference? Do you lean towards the cost-effective versatility of the Goggles X, or do you prefer that low latency and high adaptability of HD0? Now, there is also the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But enemy of my friend is my enemy, so actually Jim is my enemy. There's a potential for an unexpected partnership. Just think, what if Walksdale and HD0 both formed a united front against DJI? Now, such a team-up would heavily depend on compatibility. So can the Goggles X adapt to the various systems, like analog and HD0? And what about its compatibility with simulators? The Goggles X has analog compatibility, although transitioning from analog to digital, it offers it via an AV input. Although it is a step behind because recording for analog DVR isn't possible at the current time. And that might change with future updates. But it is intriguing to think about the possibilities with the replaceable front plate. Perhaps a Walksnail version of the BDI Digi adapter could add better integration of analog into the Walksnail Goggles X. The HDMI input of the Goggles X really expands its capability. Connect it to the computer using a micro HDMI to HDMI cable, and you're good to go for the simulator for risk-free virtual training. The HDMI functionality does allow connection to a HD0 VRX module. So picture this, HD0 VRX, that's built into a replaceable front plate that fits the Goggles X. Now, that would absolutely shake up the status quo, posing a significant challenge to DJI's dominance and bringing in a new level of adaptability to the table. Now, let's dive into the realm of the upgradable VRX module and the whole concept of future-proofing. After talking to Cadex, I've learned that, yes, they are developing a new digital FPV system set to launch in August next year. And this obviously raises a crucial question for current users around compatibility. Will this new system work with existing Walksnail hardware? And Cadex have confirmed it will. Your current equipment won't suddenly become outdated, meaning you have to replace a whole new fleet. However, we can't ignore the big question of longevity. With a looming upgrade in nine months, can the Goggles X withstand the rapid pace of technological change? Will they stay relevant and functional for the next three to five years? especially with the speed at which technology is evolving. Now, this concern mirrors what we see often in computers and technology in general, and it's a topic worth exploring. For a top-tier 360Hz gaming monitor like the best ones you can buy today, you need to be ready to shell out a grand, and that's not even going to get you 4K resolution. Now, imagine if this tech was in your FPV goggles. It sounds great, right? However, by the time it's affordable and able to get into your goggles, and cost around 500 bucks. Today's hot gadget, the Goggles X, they're going to be ancient like a dinosaur. But the silver lining is that the staying power of the Goggles X hinges on Caddick's commitment to making sure future updates play nice with older hardware. If Caddick do end up following through, they're rewriting the rules, and that means that your current spend on the Walksnail ecosystem isn't just a flash in the pan, but ensures that you won't be ditching your entire setup every time a new shiny toy rolls out every couple of years. In essence, the Goggles X aren't about to just lock you into Walksnail's world with no potential to upgrade. And that's where that upgradable VRX comes in. It is that promise of compatibility, and it's shaping up to be a shrewd move for the long game, particularly when you combine it with a HD0 VRX. If you're still mulling over which digital FPV ecosystem to get into, I've got something for you to check out. This video right here is where I gave Walksnail a try, and I think you'll find my results were quite impressive. And for those looking to do a 5-inch freestyle build, there are some free guides and workshops on my website. The links are in the description below. I'm Darren Allen. Until next time, don't forget to send it.